Durham take lead after skittling pairs for 131. The pairs got off the mark last week against Derbyshire with their first win, while Durham's flirtation with the top positions in Group 1 came to an end against the champions Essex. Worcestershire are now the side hoping to break into that top three. Durham won the toss under overcast new road skies and chose to bowl, a decision that was vindicated early on when Libby fell to Cass. Fell's innings lasted only four balls, one run added before he was out LBW to Potts. Potts wasn't done though. Roderick out before the over was up. He too trapped in front, out for a duck. The carnage continued in the next over, the top four all gone with just 20 on the board when Cass had Mitchell out. Worcestershire were on the cusp of 50 runs when Whiteley had to go, caught by Borthwick off the bowling of Rushworth. They ticked off the team half-century before the break, but the hosts were in all sorts of trouble. A rethink needed over lunch, with the score 62 for 5. They found their way into the 80s after lunch. Could Worcestershire dispense with the early pattern of play? It didn't look like it when Durham had their sixth, and an important one too. Cox caught behind off Potts. D'Olivera and Barnard ticked Worcestershire past 100 runs, but it was difficult going, the rate not racing away, and Durham kept piling on the pressure. It told. Barnard caught behind, Cass now with three to his name. He and Potts were continuing to impress in the afternoon. It was four for Cass. Leach's innings lasted just four balls before the captain departed, caught behind. There would be just a few overs and a handful of runs added when Rain picked up his first of the day tongue out LBW for nine. Worcestershire's innings was at an end not long after his departure. Potts back with his fourth of the innings, Pennington out for a duck and the pairs skittled for 131. T was taken with the fall of the wicket. There wasn't much encouragement for Worcestershire in their batting card. D'Olivera, their top scorer, not out for 39. There wasn't much he could do as Durham ran riot. Carson and Potts with four apiece and they had a real chance to stamp their authority on the game after tea. Bancroft and Lees got them off to a pretty quick start. 36 runs scored off the first seven overs of their innings. But it was the eighth that saw Worcestershire claim their first scalp. Bancroft caught by Fell off the bowling of Tongue. Borthwick helped Lees take the total past 50. And the opener was playing well and looked in good touch in the face of whatever the pairs sent his way. It took him into the 40s and the score ticking on towards 100 runs. Worcestershire's total a little more than 50 away. He ticked over to 50 with a well-timed stroke for four, the boundary also taking the value of the partnership to a half-century of crucial runs. Borthwick took a shine to the bowling of Pennington to drag the side up to 100 runs. They were closing in on the pair's first innings total, but with 103 on the board, Lees was gone. 52 all he could muster in the end, out caught behind off Whiteley. Borthwick fell with the close rapidly approaching, but he'd helped his side turn a deficit into a slender lead. And before the end of the day, there was more joy for Worcestershire. Potts out for a duck to tongue in the same over. They'd reached the close at 140 for four, leading the pairs by just nine runs. But that lead would surely grow in the morning of day two. Just how much could the hosts restrict their visitors?